Welcome, so in this video, we're gonna be working through this question here. Uh, it's question 13 of the 1989 maths competition, and it appeared in both the junior and intermediate level. level. So remember, junior is year seven and eight. And as you can see, in 1989, 7% of uh, students got it right in the junior level, and 7% got it right in the intermediate level. So a very tricky question. Uh, I really encourage you to pause the video, give it a go before you watch this, because otherwise it's gonna ruin it for you. You wanna give it a good go before you look at the solutions. All right, it says, there are 300 girls who represent a certain school in both summer and winter sports. In summer, 60% of these girls play cricket and the other 40% play squash. Let's just stop there for a moment and just do what we can here. So we have summer sports, and one of our summer sports is cricket. And we know that 60% of 300 students uh, play cricket. Now hopefully you can do this very quickly in your head, 60% of 300. Uh, the best way to think about it is what's 10% of 300? It's going to be 30. So therefore if you want 60%, of 300, all you're going to do is multiply this by six to get 180. And just like that, you can get 180 uh, very quickly. Then we do the same thing uh, for squash, 40%. So we've got squash, which is 40% of 300. So just the remaining students. So we can just do 120 because 180 plus 120 is 300. Okay, so we have just done the summer sports here. Fantastic. And remember for the summer sports, there are two of them, there is cricket, and there is squash. All right, let's go on to the next part. It says, in winter, the girls play hockey or netball, but not both. 56% of the hockey players take the cricket, sorry, let me read that again. 56% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer, and 30% of the cricket players take netball in the winter. The number of girls who play netball and squash is. All right, so you can see that immediately this question gets a lot harder as soon as we get into this second section in which we're talking about the winter sports. So we have to consider the winter sports. And for the winter sports, we know that there's two of them. There is a hockey and netball. Hockey, netball. But notice that the information that they've given us about these winter sports aren't really uh, connected to the total 300 girls, as was my summer sports. Rather, it says 50% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer and 30% of the cricket players take netball in the winter. It's kind of recognizing the fact that, uh, you know, these girls are taking either cricket or hockey, or maybe they take cricket and netball or maybe they take squash and hockey, or squash or netball. There's this overlap going on uh, that we need to account for uh, to answer this question. So to answer this question efficiently, and the best way to answer it is what I believe is to use a Karnoff map. Uh, and you'll see it now, I'll, I'll walk you through it, but I think that is the only real efficient way to answer this question. So what is a Karnoff map? So a Karnoff map is used when you've got uh, data that is overlapping. So if I just come down here, we know that for our summer sports, we have cricket and we have squash. And then for our winter sports, we have hockey and we have netball. Now let's rule up a graph and you'll see what this Karnoff map is going to look like. So I'm ruling this up like that and like that. Perfect. Now this is going to represent, and I'll even do this in red, this is going to represent our totals. So the total amount of students that do cricket is 180. So I put a 180 here. And the total amount of students that do squash is 120. So I put 120 here. And this two is going to be a total column. And you can obviously see this is going to be 300 there because 180 plus 120 is 300. But the really important thing that we have to recognize here is that if I look at this cricket row here, the total is 180, but do you see how it's made up of students that do cricket and hockey and students that do cricket and netball? So this represents my summer sports 
This represents my winter sports. And you can clearly see that there is an overlap of them. So you might have a, a girl that does cricket and hockey, and then a girl that does cricket and netball. And if you add those together, you get the total amount of students that are doing cricket. So that's how this Karnoff map works. All right, let's uh, go up and see the information that they've given us here and see what we can do with it. Let's just rub some stuff out here. So one piece of information that they've given us, I'm going to ignore this thing where it says 50% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer. Uh, let's just ignore that for the moment because it doesn't seem like we can do anything with it. But it does say 30% of the cricket players take netball in the winter. 30% of the cricket players take netball in the winter. So that's the overlap of the cricket players and the netball players. So if I come over here, uh, cricket and netball, it's referring to this column here. Let me just put a green dot here. So it's saying, let me read it again, 30% of the cricket players take netball in the winter. So that means, I'm gonna come over here, 30% of the cricket players, there's 180 cricket players, take netball in the winter. So this isn't the total amount of students that are doing netball, but it's the netball students that do cricket. 30% of the cricket players do netball. It's referring to this column here. So I need to figure out what 30% of 180 is. Again, we can use the same technique. We can go 30, per, sorry, 10%. 10% 10 of 180 is uh, 18. And therefore, if I want 30% of 180, I simply multiply this by three, and that's going to give me 54. So it'll be 54 here. So that means this is going to be 54 because 30% of the cricket players do netball. Now, because we have this, I can figure out this because remember this and this have to add to 180 because this is the total amount of students that are doing cricket. So that means 54 plus some number will give me 180. So. 180 minus 54 will be 126. This will be 126. Perfect. We've filled out this column now. Amazing. Um, but we're not done yet. All right, let's come back here again. So come back to the question. The next part of the question that we're really going to analyze is this part where it says 50% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer. 56% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer. So that is the overlap of the hockey players with the cricket players. So what it's saying is, if I come down here, whoops, my computer wants to work with me, 56%, 56% of the hockey players. Well, the hockey players, I don't know what that number is. That would be the number down here. 56% of this number here, let's call it H, because I don't know, it's the total amount of hockey players. 56% of these players play cricket in the summer. Well, I know that 126 students who take hockey, play cricket in the summer. So all I have to do is figure out what 56% of H's, so the total amount of hockey players is, uh, to get 126, because 50% of the total amount of hockey players will be 126. Then we can just write this out uh, like this. So there are multiple different ways to do this now. Don't think that this is the only way, and this is just kind of uh, mathematical now, so it's not really thinking through what we're doing, it's just applying some maths. Uh, 56 over 100 times H is equal to 126. Um, how can we solve this? I'll give you a, a simpler example to help you solve it. If, if, I said, uh, if I said a half of some number X is equal to five, and you wanted to solve for what X is, well, one half times X is equal to five, what you'd end up doing is you could keep x here and then just go five times and then flip this fraction, two over one. x is going to be equal, five times two over one is 10 over one, which is just 10. So half of 10 is five. So do you see how by flipping the fraction and multiplying it to the other side, uh, we can get what we're after? So that's simply what we're going to do here. Uh, and again, there's different ways to do this. The h is going to be equal to one, two, six. I'm gonna flip this fraction around. Uh, times 100 over 56. Now it's just a matter of simplifying this thing. Um, 126 and 56 are both divisible by seven. 56 divided by seven is eight. 126 divided by seven is seven goes into 12 once with five left over, it'll be 18. I can simplify that again. I can divide them both by two. This will be four, this will be nine. 
uh, 104 are both divisible by 4. That will be 1. That will be 25. So at the end of the day, what I'm going to be left with here is h is equal to 9 times 25. And 9 times 25 is 225. So that is the total amount of hockey players. 225. 225. So to repeat that, 56% of 225 will be 126. And that's exactly what this is saying. 56% of the hockey players take cricket in the summer. So that's kind of what we're, we're thinking of there. Now, remember that this has to add up. So 126 plus whatever this is has to be equal to 225 because hockey is made up of students that do uh, cricket and hockey and squash and hockey. So therefore, to figure out what this number is here, what I'm going to do, this is getting a little bit messy, 225 minus 126, that's going to be 99. So I put a 99 there. Uh, now, I'm just solving all sorts of things here. Um, let's see if we can solve for what this is next. Could we solve that? Absolutely, because remember, this has to add up. So remember that the total amount of squash has to be uh, squash and hockey, and those who take squash and netball. Well, to figure out this, 99 plus what is going to be 120, it's going to be 21. And then we could also figure out what this is. 54 plus 21 is 75. Uh, and now we've totally filled up our Karnoff map. So let's now go back to the question and see what it actually wanted from us. Uh, the last part of the question, or the most important part, says the number of girls who play netball and squash. Netball and squash. So we come to our Karnoff map. Netball and squash is going to be 21. The, the total amount of students that do netball and squash is 21, which means our answer is E. That's what's going to be our answer. This question really highlights the importance of doing good quality working. And I really think without a Karnoff map, this question would have been out of reach uh, for many students. But you could have approached it logically and gotten there in the end. But hopefully you see the relevance and the importance of using uh, structured working to get your answer. Hopefully you are somewhere close and... Um, you enjoyed this question because it is a great question. Only 7% of people were able to answer it in 1989, but it was a year 7 and an 8 question and a 9 and 10 question as well in the maths competition. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.